Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to let your users type equations directly into any field in your Microsoft Access Forms, no pop-up required. So back in lesson 49, I showed you how to do the same thing with Excel style equations, right? But this required a pop-up input box. The user would hit the equal sign, right? That required this input box to, to come up with the calculator. So you could type in the equation here and then it would get evaluated and store it back in that field again. But I was thinking, and a lot of you emailed me like, is it really necessary? No, it's not necessary if you set up a hidden text box. I think we talked about this in that lesson, right? You can make a hidden text box that, that stores text you could save the value in the text and evaluate it, but then you gotta set up a, a hidden one of those for each one of these fields, which that's a pain. That's why I popped up the input box. But then I thought to myself, I said, self, there has to be a better way, right? And as the man, as I, how'd it go? As I rained down blows upon him, I thought there had to be a better way. The, the Seinfeld episode with, uh, with, uh, with Festivus, right? <laughs> I thought there had to be a better way. Anyways, there is a better way but it involves some tricky error handling, right? We can basically let the user type whatever they want into that box, let it generate an error, hide the error message, intercept it, right? See if it's a, a calculation or an equation that we can figure out, save that value back to it, and then tell it to ignore the error. That took a little, it took a little brain noodle firing for me to come up with this one, but it works. Let me show you how. All right, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go to the form properties. And by the way, just because we learned something new, a new way of doing something, doesn't mean the old way was bad, right? It's like when science learns something new. It doesn't mean the old way was necessarily bad. It might've been, right? Bloodletting to get rid of evil demons if you're sick, that kind of, yeah, uh, well, that's not really science, but it just means that we've, we've discovered a new way of doing it, which the old way was perfectly fine. But we can turn key preview off. We're no longer going to intercept that key down event. So if you got a key down event in here, which you might, us members, uh, we built the thing called do calculator. We're going to update that in the extended cut. But for everybody else, you can just get rid of that form key down event. I think we got it in another place too. So wherever you got it, you can get rid of it. Members, you can delete your do calculator uh, function. We're going to make something different today in the extended cut. So now... What I want to do is I want to access the form error event. Form error. Where are you? Oh, got to go to the form properties and then find form error on error. Where are you? Why can't I see it? There it is way down here. Okay. Go into the on error event. Now this guy is going to pop up whenever anything in this form generates an error and it's going to give you a data error, which is the error number. Okay. And then it's going to give you, or you can give it a response, meaning how do you want to respond to it? In other words, you can say, show the default error message or hide the error message. I'll handle it myself, which is what we're going to do. I got a whole separate video on trapping form errors. So you can, you know, take the weird access messages like, you know, an error has occurred 3022 or whatever, and you can give your users more user friendly messages, right? Which is basically what we're gonna do, except instead of a message, we're just, we're just gonna ignore it. We're gonna evaluate it if we can, and if not, just ignore it and give them the message, all right? But first we have to know what, what error gets thrown, right? What number gets generated if the user tries typing in a calculation. So right now I just wanna message box the data error. Let's figure out what number it is, okay? Yeah, you can look it up on Microsoft's website if you have got an hour to spend. So I just have access tell me what it's doing, right? So in here, now I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna use a different one because I already got my meals in here today. All right, I'm gonna come down here. If I type in equals two plus eight, okay, it's 2113 is the error number that gets generated if you type an in invalid data into that field, okay? All right, hit okay. There's the error message you normally get. We're gonna ignore that. Hit escape. So it's 2113. So here I'm gonna say, if data error equals 2113, then, right, this is the uh, the value uh, you entered isn't valid for this field. Basically they typed in something they're not supposed to type in. They could type in Joe, right? Okay. All right, now we don't wanna throw this for just 
any field because if they try typing in like up something here that's invalid or over here or a time that's invalid, I don't want to I don't want it to work for every single field. So let's just focus on the calories field, the calories per unit. Okay, members, we're going to make it global again so we can use it anywhere in any form in any field. But for now, let's just we're focused on one field. So here I'm going to say if if the user is on the calories per unit field, if screen dot active control dot name equals calories per unit, then so if we're on that field, do some stuff. OK. So what's some stuff? Well, I want to get the text that they typed in and see if I can evaluate it. So we need to store that in a local variable. So let's dim s as string. And we're going to say s equals calories per unit dot text. We have to get the text in the box, not the value in the box. Because a, an error has been generated, that value has not been saved yet. It hasn't been saved to the table. It's not stored anywhere except as just text in a text box. That's what the dot text says. Okay, it's not the value of the property or the field underneath, it's just the text in the box. Okay? Now, let's see if we can evaluate it. So S equals eval S, like that. Okay? Now, if after you've evaluated it, if it turns out to be a number, then it's good. We can save it in the field. So if is numeric s, then calories per unit dot text. We're replacing the text. You can't save it to the value at this step. Trust me, I've tried. All we're doing is replacing the text that the user typed in. It's not saved to the field yet until we exit out of this event. But we're going to set that equal to s. And now we should be good because we put a number in there so we can ignore the error. So response equals, and here it is, it's AC data error continue. That's just an, a fancy access constant. The other one is AC data error display, which is the default. But you don't need to know that because you just don't give a response. It'll use that response. All right. Okay. And if, and there's one more thing I want to put in here. If you're used to typing in the equal sign and you want to keep the equal sign, that's fine. Just remove it in here. Okay. So we're going to say um, right here, I'll put if left of S comma one equals an equal sign, then just remove it. S equals the right of S. How many characters? The length of S minus one. All right. That removes the equals from the front because I'm in the habit of using the equal sign now. So you, I, you can use it or not use it. It's up to you. Okay. All right. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Come back out. Meow. Now I'm going to close it, reopen it, come down here to my test one. And I'm going to come down here and type in equals one plus three. Let's say press enter. All right. You're going to get an error message here. And if you hit debug, it's because we're trying to set it back equal to something else, equal to S, which is four. That's correct. But what's happening is it's generating an error message inside of here now that we then have to also ignore. I know it's weird. The form error fires brings you into this code. Okay. But as you can see, it's working. So now we have to just ignore that error too. I know. I know. It's weird, but well, but the problem is fixed by simply doing this. Watch, come right up here. Well, actually, let's do it in here. We can do it at this point. We're going to say on error, resume next. And if you want to be safe down here, say on error, go to zero. That turns off error handling in case later on you decide to add more stuff down here. We don't want to just leave error handling off. Okay. All right. Now save it. Debug compile again. We don't have to. All right. Close it. Open it. Come down in here and type in equals three plus one. Enter. There's your four. All right. And the nice thing is you can keep going because it just replaced the text. We're still editing the text. So now I can also go times two. Enter. There's an eight. <laughs> plus three. Enter. Plus three minus four times two. Enter. And it keeps going until you hit tab. And then it saves it. 
Isn't that cool? I was when I figured that out, I was like, oh man. When I hit that last error message, before I realized you have to do this, I was kind of stumped. I'm like, why is it still throwing an error? Because we're in the form error event. It shouldn't be doing that. But it does. But if you ignore it, it works. Access has all these little quirks. I'm telling you, I love it, but it's just, it's got all these quirks. It's saying, oh, you can't do that, but yeah, it lets you. <laughs> so that's it. That's, that's how you can do it. Now you can go in here and you can just type in, you know, yeah, and you don't need the equal sign now. You can just type in 10 times three, boom. Because we're chopping off that equal sign. And anything you can evaluate, 30 plus parentheses seven, Divided by three, oh, let's make it let's make it eight divided by four. I don't want to put fractions in there because you'll get fractions. If you don't want fractions, you can round that stuff off too. So like thirty-two, or let's do uh, let's do ten divided by three. You're gonna get that. So if you don't want that, I'd come in here, and then um, you could, if you want to, just say int of s like this. Let's see if we can get away with that. 10 divided by three. Yeah, that'll work. That's fine. But that's it. There you go. That's how you do it. That's the technique. I've now shown you my secret. Members extended cut. We got a little more work to do. We're going to make it so that this works with any field. And we're going to get notifications while we're doing it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had a reminder pop up. Um, we're going to make it work with any field on any form and um, have some fun. So that's in the extended cut. And I got noises going off in my office here. Someone's beaming in too. My dog's just barked in the background. Ugh. All right, so that's it. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that myself. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.